Well, this might or might not be a little bit of a uh, different review. This I'm actually taking a look at is uh, the WorkSharp Precision Adjust Sharpener. And something that uh, a lot of people probably look at it at as a uh, competitor to probably the, uh, the KME here. And, for one, this thing is very much cheaper, both in construction and, uh, you know, price and all that sort of stuff. But, I think it's fixed quite a few kind of issues that I've personally had with it. So, I actually do favor this thing. Uh, for one, uh, you kind of do have the, uh, the issue of, uh, it doesn't really collapse into the, uh, Super nice, compact uh, carrying case that the KME kind of comes with. That little gun case kind of thing. So that is kind of convenient that it uh, does get a little bit smaller there. But something that I've run into on the KME, uh, and it mostly has to do with the, uh, the mounting mechanism, um, where it's got the uh, the metal holding, uh, clamping on both sides of the uh, stones here, is you run a really, really bad chance of kind of scratching your blade. Now this is super egregious. Part of this was just my fault, but it also wasn't something I was really feeling any feedback on. So, so you get all sorts of scratches going along the blade. Um, a little more often, you will run into, or you can at least, run into a couple of them, kind of here and there. And it's really annoying. Um, for these two knives in particular, and one or two others that have had this uh, kind of thing go on, uh, I'm actually thinking about trying to stonewash the blades just so I can, you know, kind of deal with that a little bit. I kind of like stonewashing more than satin anyway, so. Yeah, there's that. And I'm also never going to try and sell those knives as new. So I, I guess that really doesn't matter all that much. But, all right. So, the KME does come with a stand. Um, if you get a kit that actually includes it, which apparently not all of them do. Uh, and it's nice for uh, keeping it on the tabletop. And, uh, yeah, you got uh, this little guy up top here that me and a lot of other people have flipped go on the other side so we can try to get lower angles. Because uh, this one, as you can see, kind of bottoms out at 17. I like to sharpen my uh, really high-end cutlery to 15, so you kind of got to flip it around to be able to get to that. Um, that and uh, these guys aren't super reliable for a lot of uh, for a lot of actual reading so you mostly ignore these guys. Clamp the blade in there and then you know either use your phone or uh, an angle cube to be able to figure out when this bar is uh, in that spot and laying on the blade, what angle it's at by kind of reading on this uh, wood piece right here. Um, something that this one, uh, the Precision, just does better is you don't have the back part of the bar poking out through, uh, you know, the back. So it's a little bit easier to use, uh, you know, up against uh, a wall in your garage or something like that. It's a little bit uh, easier to deal with. Oh, something else that's kind of interesting with uh, this is the uh, the jaws are removable from it, which uh, can be super super nice for uh, you know sharpening larger knives where you know turning it that both of these guys do support uh, would have the blade or the handle you know just not clear that or whatever you can just fully pull it out, swap it over, fantastic. Um, these jaws also have a, uh, a second inset, if I can, uh, yeah. 
should loosen that up a little bit more. But there you go, where you can rest the uh, the spine of the blade on there for kind of taller knives. Or for less than that, then you can, uh, I basically use the top uh, area here to kind of choose exactly where I want to put it on the blade. You know, if you can uh, clamp onto a little bit of flat, that helps. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, they're both rubber lined, so that's great. Um, certainly helps with uh, clamping and making sure that something doesn't slide right off there. Now, as you can see, um, you really do need to uh, check if you're going for a super, super shallow edge um, that you're not grinding on any of that. <laughs> But uh, that just kind of comes with, uh, you know, taking a look at it uh, after you get the uh, the blade mounted and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what I have noticed is, uh, well, here's the, uh, the sharpening sort of thing for uh, this guy here. Uh, and what is different about it from the KME um, is, you know, for one, um, the bar is going sliding on there so it basically latches in with a little magnet thing right under here and so you don't really have anything coming out the back which is nice uh the other thing about it is um these uh different stones it's going to look a little bit different um yeah he comes with a uh, 320 diamond uh 600 diamond and then a uh And then a white ceramic. There we go. So you do have a little bit less options as compared to the KME, which uh, I'm perfectly happy to uh, to uh, admit that. Um, this was my original uh, 320 stone, and I had basically worn it to the point where it really wasn't cutting much at all. But that is after sharpening well over 30 knives uh, uh, most of which was done with the 320 uh, steel guy on there so that way the uh, the 600 and the ceramic are still perfectly fine um, what I ended up having to do was uh, kind of purchase a new one of these from workshop uh, on their website they sell them they're like seven or eight bucks or something like that um, Unfortunately, right now, I think it's because this is new and they don't have a whole lot of stock. You can only buy one of these at a time, or at least one of any particular grit, uh, which was annoying. And I kind of reached out to them uh, using their chat thing or whatever, going, is there any way I can purchase more than one? Because this $5 shipping for a $7 item seems a little annoying. And, uh, well, they wouldn't let me purchase more than one, but they did give me a coupon for free shipping. So I picked that up. Uh, it does have a little bit going into uh, replacing the stone on there. And I'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, something that uh, I absolutely love. And it's something that I'd mentioned with this. As well as the uh, the Edge Pro. Is uh, you basically have a worm gear going for uh, all the different angles. Between 25, 20, 15. And then you got your individual increments. Like the... Uh, the uh, the Workshark Canonian blade grinder attachment, same kind of thing there. But yeah, the uh, the worm gear is very sturdy. It doesn't really waver at all once you're in uh, a particular angle that you want to be at. Uh, more often than not, I'm sharpening my knives to uh, 17. And that's what I do for uh, most of my uh, uh, mid tech steels. You know, you got your uh, D2, 14C, 28N, N690, CO, you know, normal stuff. And then, you know, a lot of the uh, the higher end uh, powder metallurgy stuff, I will go down to uh, 15 if I feel like uh, that would be great. And also, apparently, if the, uh, the blade geometry will allow that. That's um, something that I will say is kind of a little bit of a difficulty on almost any guided rod sharpener is uh 
if you get well this guy might not be the uh the best example but if you have a uh, a thinner blade that you know has a nice steel like m390 on there uh you really run the problem of not being able to have enough clamping force on the uh the blade there to be able to uh keep it stable and keep that shallow edge whereas on a stone or on a belt or whatever that's not really a problem so uh there is that kind of thing so uh you know if you're thinking that uh this is a fantastic thing for sharpening your swiss army knives probably not i i really would advise against that so when this thing came um uh, the uh this top portion and the base were in two and it clips together and it's uh, there we go yep you can kind of break it down if you really want to uh, i don't necessarily suggest uh pulling it apart all the time but i don't think it's really going to hurt anything uh the clamp on this thing um you know has a couple of magnets on it um that will hold it in there as well as uh, a couple of rails for these uh plastic bits to go in and yeah, it's quite nice and uh stable as well uh the next kind of thing i'll show i don't know i'll just grab any particular knife so i can uh clamp it so i can get a little bit of leverage on there uh but yeah you can see this does separate a little bit out that's fine you just kind of push it forward as you uh exude the uh the sharpening or the uh the clamping force on there and uh yeah so it's got a button on the back side here it might just look like a piece of plastic but uh you can push that and rotate it over so you don't need to pull it out and do that every time if the knife is uh, small enough to uh, clear that this thing can uh, sharpen easily up to uh, probably eight or nine inch uh, chef's knives so uh, you know some of those that's really not going to work all that well for but for this it's great uh, it doesn't however uh, rotate a lot it will rotate to there but for the most part <laughs> you're just going to uh that's kind of a lock position there but uh yeah for the most part you're just going to have that it doesn't really have uh you know full 360 degrees like the uh the kme does here but this does make it a lot easier to uh get the clamp there because you don't have to loosen this guy and then push over in the back and then usually because these guys have the uh, rubber jaws they like to stick together so i gotta spread it apart get the knife in there it's uh it's a little bit more difficult than uh this guy right here so we got that out of the way um you know you can still measure uh the angles uh with an angle cube where your uh your phone's gyrometer um once you get something kind of set up but because these are very easily marked um and it's very repeatable to get back to exactly where it is which is much more difficult here where you have to uh loosen this uh screw guy on the back slide it down and, and whatnot uh it's much easier to just go nah, that's basically 17 degrees for my knives kind of depending on um you know how tall or narrow the blade shape is that's just kind of the way i roll it might not be absolute exact science but it's pretty darn close and uh yeah so i will kind of set that aside a little bit uh we'll go into this guy here this uh, has basically a uh, rubber gasket on either side that's uh, easily set to uh, limit your motion. And uh, it's quite easy to uh, set this guy up. Slide that dude all up in there. And then, yeah, you'll basically hit down towards the end of the stone there and slide that guy up oops sorry about that 
and then you can kind of easily push back to uh, have it basically match on the uh, the other end. That way you're getting a full stroke and it's much easier to uh, stop yourself from coming off of the stone. Uh, but, unlike the, uh, the KME's clamping system here, um, you have plastic on the sides here. So even if you do slip off, which I've done maybe two or three times, um, then it won't scratch the ever-loving crap out of your blade from having uh, hardened steel next to it. Uh, so yeah, here's a, another kind of interesting thing. Um, I do kind of wish they'd give you a few more of those in the, uh, in the box. Now, right out of the box, I can say uh, I had this thing and moving it back and forth, I was actually getting a squeaking. And uh, it wasn't really friction against the blade because I could reproduce it by pulling it off of the blade and just sliding the thing back and forth. My first thought to uh, kind of combat that was uh, lithium grease, which um, worked, but it kind of bound things up a little bit more than I wanted, and you can still see some black crap coming off of it now. Um, so that probably wasn't exactly the uh, the best way to go for it. Uh, so I pulled that out, cleaned the rod, uh, actually uh, took a pipe cleaner to uh, clean out in the middle of this guy and uh, got most of that out, you know, dipped some solvent. Most of the time I use acetone because, hey, I do fingernail stuff. So uh, that worked out all right, and uh, I just... Threw on some knife lubricant. In this case, I didn't actually use KPO because, uh, well, it's kind of precious and uh, I only have about a half a bottle left. But uh, I do have uh, some Benchmade Blue Lube that I also end up using for uh, treating uh, a lot of my carta. And uh, that did a pretty darn good job of uh, keeping everything from uh, binding up and whatnot. So, yeah, now that you got this guy taken apart by uh, removing that... Uh, front little gasket um you got basically a couple of caps that can come off there you go and uh yeah from here uh they are actually attached with uh 3m adhesive um there we go this is from the uh the new one it was the strip that uh came with it from uh workshop and uh yeah you just basically peel it and then place it back on there essentially i pulled the other one off with a spudger but i don't really want to do it because all of these guys are perfectly adhesed but yeah i basically dug underneath with a spudger got it up then got it down there and use it like a paring knife to basically pull that all the way off and that was great but it does leave behind a whole lot of uh, uh adhesive from the adhesive strip so, yeah, that's kind of a pain in the ass, but uh, I ended up using some uh, some goo gone here to uh, kind of squirt that on uh, both that and the stone and uh, let that sit for a little bit and then cleaned it off. And then, of course, that stuff leaves an oily residue, so I used more acetone to clean all of that off. Anyway, once you uh, clean that off and whatnot, you can just slap the stone back on there. And you can see, uh, definitely a, uh, a Jerry signature of, um, I put it on the wrong side because <laughs> these numbers should be, uh, facing the other way, but, uh, you know, it works just the same. So I don't really care. <laughs> so yeah, it's a little bit complicated to, uh, try to, uh, deal with these guys a little bit, but very much not impossible. So. The next thing that I've kind of hit is um, this ceramic stone is uh, I don't know, basically about a thousand, maybe twelve hundred grit or so, which will get a knife nice and shiny. I like this guy right here. It'll get them nice and shiny, but it won't actually polish the edge all that much um 
So, uh, you know, especially if you, uh, familiar with sharpening with a KME or these other rod based systems, if you do sawing motions on the blade, like mostly what I end up doing with that as well, um, you don't really have a nice uniform scratch pattern. So it does just kind of look like a shattered mirror kind of thing. Whereas you can actually achieve a much better mirror polish with this guy. Uh, but it does require basically a uh, an adhesive backed uh, lapping film. Now I have some at the moment. Wherever the hell I actually put them. Might take me a moment. Aha. Actually have some. Uh, this is a uh, six micron. Uh, this is uh, directly from KME. This also came with uh, obviously their um, their sodium lime uh, treated uh, glass plate, but it is essentially just um, adhesive bag lapping films, and these are cut to uh, four inch by one inch because that's what the uh, the KME stones use. They give you basically five of these. Um, I believe five in a uh, in a pack. Unfortunately, they're like they they don't sell the lapping films just by themselves. They always come with those uh, sodium lime treated uh, glass things. So they're like eighteen or nineteen bucks a pack, which um, yikes. Um, but since I have them and I don't plan on using the KME all that much, uh, I've basically taken these and uh, I can. Cut it right down the middle with uh, some scissors. And that's what I uh, pulled off of here earlier. And now I got crap on it. So, eh, well, I've got a pretty good use out of it. But, uh, yeah, this is the adhesive-backed uh, lapping film. And uh, since these stones are basically uh, half-inch by four-inch, they fit perfectly on there. And they are uh, basically... Uh, you know, a pressure adhesive. So it's adding more friction as you're kind of pushing down on it. So you can slap that right on the ceramic as long as it's not super caked up with uh, steel and works absolutely fantastic. If you want, you can tweak the, uh, the worm gear just a little tiny bit to kind of make up for the fact that this is um, ever so slightly thicker than uh, the other thing. But I don't really find it all that necessary. But, uh, yeah, it really, really does make a difference on, uh, on these blades. You can still see a little bit of scratch sort of stuff going there. That's probably where you could, uh, go down to a, uh, to a lower, uh, micron kind of thing. But at that point... You don't really want to saw back and forth. For one, you'll end up cutting into these, and then you're back to square one with uh, with the uh, the ceramic edge there. But uh, but yeah, you can just go in that same motion, but it helps a lot more if you uh, do the full sweep kind of thing, which uh, I think KME also um, basically uh, recommends when you're sharpening them with their stuff too. Where did, ah, there's a little hand thingy. I'm going to throw this back on the rod here in a moment. But, uh, yeah. So you got just, you know, a little adhesive sticker there. And, uh, you got a nice kind of jimp sort of thing going on there. Um, it really doesn't matter which way you choose. But, uh, I do believe that, uh, it came this way. So that the, uh, the work sharp thing is facing you. So that you remember <laughs> what tool I guess you're using or whatnot. Um, but yeah, you just basically slide that guy in there. You want to have it so one of the stones are actually facing up, not kind of off to the side. Otherwise, uh, the rod has a hard time actually uh, getting through there. But yeah, it um, they turn and then snap into place. And they're, you know, there's a little bit of wiggle there, as you could uh, see on the um, the previous stone. If you're not super, super flat, you can actually just wear away uh, 
you know, the side edge on something. Uh, which, I mean, you, it's par for the course for learning how to use basically any of these kind of things. But, uh, yeah, it works quite well. I do like the, uh, the magnetic sort of thing here. Really haven't had any problems, uh, trying to, this guy's actually sharp, so I'll at least throw it on the ceramic so I don't, uh, go any further. But, uh, yeah, um, I do like the, uh, the magnetic thing here. This ball joint works great. Don't really have any, uh, problems with it binding up or, uh, having any, any other kind of issues there. What I was talking about with the sweep, um, you can start basically at the top at the base and with, uh, not a whole lot of pressure, but a little bit, you know, slide all the way there. That actually will kind of force the scratch pattern from being up and down to, uh, a little bit more diagonal, which uh, helps with uh, the polish, actually. Um, so that's kind of what I was talking about there earlier. But uh, yeah, I really, really like this system. Um, they are hard to get right now, apparently. Um, I purchased this alongside uh, this little fun piece of uh, equipment for testing knife sharpness from uh, sharpeningsupplies.com. Yeah, there we go. There's a sticker from it that came in the box. And, uh, yeah, they were selling them for 50 but, uh, you know, I, I do know that uh, them, as well as a lot of other places, uh, ran out of stock. But, hey, I purchased that for um, Black Friday, and then these things came a little bit after Christmas. So it took a while, but, hey, I got it, and I'm happy with it. Uh, like I said, I do like the clamp more than, uh, this guy. It's a little less fiddly to, uh, try to get slack on the jaws by pushing it forward after it's, uh, loosened up there. Um, they both grab onto the blades really, really well. I suppose, um... You know, if you do have trouble with uh, any of the uh, the normal parts, probably not um, the main tower here. But, you know, you can get replacement stones. Um, supposedly, you can get replacement clamps, um, uh, replacement rods, all sorts of stuff for it to uh, keep it going, which is fantastic because, well, I basically paid... Forty nine ninety five for this guy. Well, I mean, you know, tax and uh, shipping and all that sort of stuff on top of it. But between fifty and sixty bucks is kind of what it uh, ends up going for, which um, is a far cry from uh, I think the uh, the two hundred and thirty that I'm spending on the KME, and it's fixed some of the issues that I've had with the KME. That being the uh, the ability to scratch the ever living crap out of the blade. And um, being a lot easier with a worm gear to decide the exact angle that you want to set this to. Rather than um, trying to uh, loosen this guy up and then trying to tighten it while it's uh, still kind of sliding around on you and whatnot. It's, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit more difficult to use. So uh, this is totally the guy that I'm uh, going to be sharpening a lot of knives with. Um... I have sharpened basically about 30 knives with it so far. And they get stupid sharp. <laughs> um, I kind of realized that uh, first time when I was trying to clean a blade. I think I might have uh, mentioned this uh, in another one. But usually I'll use, uh, use these little uh, nail cloth things here to uh, apply some tough glides like D2 blades and whatnot. And... Uh, yeah, I usually don't have any problem, and I, uh, drug it along there, and, uh, well, these things will slice right through like nothing. Whereas I'm not super used to that with a standardly sharp or work, uh, yeah, working edge kind of, um, sharp on things. They usually don't do that to cloth, but these do. So, yeah, it went through, sliced my finger. It's basically healed up because, uh, well, it was 
very, very sharp. So, uh, yeah, I immediately just set the knife down, went over to uh, my sink and rinsed it out because uh, I don't think Tough Clyde does great stuff inside your system. But, uh, yeah, that was it. A couple days later, I'm all good. So, uh, yeah, I highly, highly suggest this guy. That being said, um, this 320 stone is not the most aggressive thing in the universe. So, if you are actually trying to reprofile an edge, this might not be exactly your, your, uh, your cup of tea to start out with. That might change, you know, a lot of us have been asking them to uh, come out with some more stones for those guys. You know, obviously the uh, the KME um, has different options and whatnot. And it's, yeah, there we go, there's 600, there's 300, and there's 1500. Uh, I think this is the 150. Do I have clamped in here? Bruh. Well, I tighten that guy up. Yeah, 140, which does a pretty good job. But they also have the beast, which is a 50 grit, which um, I haven't had the, uh, the most luck with it. It just doesn't seem to be quite as an aggressive as a cut as uh, something like uh, this guy. But uh, it's still, you know, available. And uh, that does much better work when you're trying to reprofile a blade to what you want than uh, starting out at a 320. So what I've actually ended up doing with a lot of my knives, um, probably familiar that uh, most of them I end up sharpening with um, with the uh, the work sharp um, can onion with the uh, the blade grinding attachment and. Uh, that does a great job of um, doing a reprofile if I want to. Um, you know, obviously that's, uh, that does take a little bit of different um, skill to be able to uh, recognize where you are and uh, kind of lifting the blade up to uh, get the end there and everything. But it does a fantastic job of starting the reprofile to be able to actually finish it to the... Uh, stupidly sharp edge that you get on this guy um that being said testing kind of um both the uh the belt grinder um the work sharp and this one they both are kind of around the same sharpness um as far as what uh the little best likes to uh say uh they're they're they both mo mostly get somewhere around, you know, anywhere from uh, 120 to uh, 200. And, uh, you know, both of those are quite sharp. But um, the way that I've been doing on the, uh, the work sharp belts, um, they do have the uh, the convex edge on there, which actually makes the, uh, the edge stay sharper for longer, but also decreases your uh, cutting power with them. Um, because, uh, they don't really have what you would call a toothy edge by the time you've, uh, fully polished them out. You can probably stop a little bit earlier on the belts, you know, stop at the X4 or whatever, instead of, you know, going microfine and then using the, uh, the leather straps on them or whatever. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you are going to go that route... That's expensive. I don't really suggest you uh, go out and spend a whole lot of money on both of those, but it's kind of what I do. Um, if I'm do if I am sharpening this to uh, sharpening a knife to uh, 17 degrees, which I do with most, like I said, D2, 14C, 28N, N690, blah blah blah, all that sort of stuff. Um, on the uh, the Ken Onion, I would kind of uh, set that basically to. Uh, look a little bit more 15 and a half to a 16 ish that will get you a, a or sorry 16 and a half to a 16 uh, rather than um, 17 uh, that way uh, because of the convex nature you're actually taking a little bit more off which which will help with that edge to kind of go to the uh, the pointy version that this will do 
Uh, whereas if you start at 17, then you have more of that shoulder you need to actually shave off. So, yeah, I, but between the two of those, I can get, uh, you know, a knife from absolutely butter knife dull to damn sharp with the, uh, the work sharp belt, uh, sharpener in, uh, you know, four or five minutes. And uh, mounting it on here and kind of going through the uh, the different stages, all the three stones, and then, you know, obviously the uh, the lapping films. Um, you know, you can get that nice, nice mirror polish. And that probably takes another 20 minutes or so. So, you might not necessarily want to do that on all of your knives. But if there's, you know, any certain specific ones that you want, you know ultra sharp then that works absolutely a treat that being said these lapping films are very expensive from kme and you don't need to buy them from them <laughs> you can just purchase uh sheets of lapping films um in different uh different uh grits from uh Quite a few different places. I think, um, you know, auto body stores probably have quite a decent selection. Um, I've picked up some from uh, Amazon that I'm still kind of waiting for. But it has an assortment from uh, 220 grit all the way down to, uh, I, I think, like uh, 0.5 micron or whatever. So I can see just how far down the rabbit hole goes for that sort of stuff. And those sheets are eight and a half by 11. So, you know, you kind of do the math with, uh, with the, uh, the half inch by four inch and, uh, wow, you got a whole lot of strips of the different stuff. And Hey, if you got a whole bunch of, um, these nice little cabinets here, then, uh, you can, Set them in there and have uh, different grits, like uh, I've done with uh, some of my Dremel uh, uh, scotch bright things for when I'm trying to uh, polish things up and remove an oxide layer if I'm uh, anodizing titanium. This is a friend's seam ripper I'm uh, working on trying to sharpen. Uh, one of them is perfectly fine. I, I got a ridiculous edge back on that. The other one is just so well, I have a hard time getting almost anything in there. Uh, I have picked up some uh, bead things. Wherever the hell I... There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some diamond uh, bead reamer kind of things. And this one kind of works, but it's really coarse. So it's, uh, it's fighting with me. <laughs> but... Uh, she doesn't need it really at the moment, but it is, you know, super dull. So she was like, hey, if you want a challenge, here you go. So neat. Like I said, I got the other one. I basically used um, some tiny little crock sticks to sharpen that up. But uh, yeah, this uh, review has been all over the place. I think I basically got everything out that uh, I really wanted to talk about with this. Um... I really want uh, more options for uh, for these uh, these kind of cartridges or whatnot. Um, it would be nice, I think. I mean, the, this is basically the uh, standard type that will do a pretty good job for almost anything as long as you're not trying to reprofile. Um, I would kind of like a reprofiling sort of thing. Maybe something that has something like... Uh, a 140 and a 220 or something like that on there. Uh, as well as, you know, if they do have uh, anything finer, um, as far as uh, diamond or ceramic goes, I would like that as well as probably kind of the same way that, uh, that these guys do it, where, uh, you know, you could actually have basically one of these be... Uh, those, uh, yeah, those lime soda, uh, flattened glass things, uh, that you can use for, you know, some more strips. Hey, they can sell some more adhesive, uh, or, uh, more abrasives or whatever that way. So, you know, 
So yeah, I would like more grits and uh and that's almost about it. Um that's uh, about the only thing that I really have a problem with, and it's not inherent to this, just any clamping system whatsoever, is if you have a uh, very thin blade, this is really not um, something that uh, will get you a very keen edge on it, because you'll end up having to sharpen it like 30 degrees just to be able to uh, not grind away at the clamp itself. So, there you go. <laughs> So yeah, that was fun. I've been really enjoying this thing. Um, I really do highly suggest that uh, if somebody wants to uh, really kick their sharpening up to uh, the next level who doesn't have the uh, the mastery skills of um, and probably the uh, really expensive stones to be able to get a nice, nice mirror polish on... Uh, on an edge by uh, manual sharpening, then uh, this is probably one of the uh, the best and cheapest ways to go about uh, getting that done. The KME being kind of in the uh, the mid tier range of that same kind of thing, and it's at two hundred and thirty at least uh, what I paid for this set that didn't include um, the films with the glass or the beast. I purchased these separately, and they were also like you know. 30 bucks, I think, for the stone, and this was, you know, 19 for that with the, uh, the glass. So, yeah, it doesn't really, uh, have a stand kind of thing that you can uh, easily pull that off of, but what I've ended up doing more often than not is I'm chilling out on the couch. I got a knife all clamped in here while I'm just, like, watching TV or YouTube or whatnot, and this is super easy and flat to grab from behind and doesn't really have any, you know, crazy hot spots. It's very, very comfortable for me to do that. And it's got a lot of reach with this rod to be able to go all the way over to the side. That's something else that uh, just kind of occurred to me. So uh, where is my TS-21? There we are. It's over here. All right. Something that has annoyed me when sharpening with the KME is um, when you're sharpening and you want to uh, turn the thing over, uh, a lot of times you have a hard time getting the rod out of the way, whereas this thing goes all the way back, so you have absolutely no problem either side dealing with that. Um, trying to use it left-handed, I haven't personally really had to deal with that. Um, it would be kind of neat if, uh, you know, as a second revision or something like that, they could, uh, figure out a way to make that a little bit more convenient for, uh, for lefties. Just so, you know, it obviously works the same and everything. It's just, I don't know, it's a little bit awkward for me. It doesn't feel quite the same, uh, like this. But, yeah, like I said, I just love to sit there and sharpen a knife while I'm watching, uh, other YouTube stuff going on. So, yeah, that is basically my review there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ramble a little bit for a couple of minutes. <laughs> and uh, this is probably unrelated to um, to the workshop. So, y'all can uh, click off if you feel like. But, uh, you know, if you like the sound of my voice or me complaining about things, then, uh, hey, you can stick around. Let's get this out here. Probably notice this uh, little piece of circuitry here. Uh, this was a RAF power um, battery bank. And uh, it never freaking worked right. Uh, but I waited too long to be able to uh, exchange it back in. Um, my problem with it, uh, for one, is for lower current. Um, it's got a power button to turn it on and off. And if the current isn't... Um, you know, a significant drain, like if you're not using it specifically to charge a phone, like you're trying to uh, run a fan or some lights or whatnot, it'll just shut off on you after, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, which is really, really frustrating. 
And uh, then it really was having kind of uh, some problems holding a charge. So, today, in the mail, <laughs> I got a flashlight. Um, yes, it's a Tucson. <laughs> this is a Raikey design. I think this is the, uh, the LED-02. And uh, this takes an 18650, which it does not come with. <laughs> Take it all sorts of apart. And, uh, yeah, you got the uh, yeah, button there at the end. So I needed an 18650. And I'm like, well, this thing's pissing me off, but it's still fairly new, so I'm sure the batteries are fine in there so uh, I did my best to try to crack this open and wow this thing was absolutely ridiculous to try to get open um, I was trying snips and prying and everything like that it actually took me dremeling all three sides here and then cracking out the front to be able to get it because they basically uh, they didn't do it in resin, but they did it in, uh, like, silicone. They basically potted the whole thing in there, so I couldn't slide it out, which, that's fantastic for, you know, trying to, uh, be a little bit more, um, you know, secure. Not really waterproof, but helping to, uh, keep that stuff out of there. And, yeah, it took a long, long time for me to get it open. And it's kind of ugly in there, whatever. Um, I do believe this is a uh, temperature probe because it was shoved basically right down into the uh, the center of the, uh, the cells, probably to uh, monitor how hot they are for charging purposes. Um, and yeah, I finally got it out. And I'm like, all right, here they are. And uh, what I ended up running into is the fact that um, these guys are... 20 650s, not 18 650s, which, I don't know, I mean, I don't really look at a lot of, um, specific electronic equipment, but, um, I haven't heard of 20 650s before, and, uh, yeah, it just, it is too large to be able to fit in there, so, oh well, so I have three of these that came out of there, um, they were, you know, obviously welded together, and I've clipped the the leads off of those make sure that it's not easy to accidentally uh you know arc these so that uh, they you know explode immediately because uh i don't want that <laughs> but yeah i'm really interested in actually getting this up and running um and that's why i kind of took that apart because while i was just sitting around it wasn't really being used wasn't working and yeah Oh well. This thing is uh, supposedly 350 lumens. Um, you know, full titanium construction because, uh, well, they deal with a lot of titanium. Just like their uh, pins and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I'm interested in trying to uh, pick up some uh, decent... 18650s, but uh, I don't really know a great way to go about that right now. Like, just kind of doing some Amazon searches. Um, uh, I'm not really finding any of the, uh, you know, the standard name brands like Sony or Philips or uh, Orbitron or basically any of that sort of stuff. It's all, you know, run-of-the-mill ghetto um, Chinese stuff and most of it comes already with a flashlight that's supposed to take it which kind of defeats the purpose of something like this but you know all of those are you know claiming ridiculous stuff like um, 5,000 milliamp hours which uh, I think these things kind of top out at uh, 35 or 3600 um, so, yeah, I'm a, at a little bit of a loss online where I can uh, kind of find and pick some of those up. I might have to uh, 
hit up an actual battery shop or something like that to uh, to uh, see. But yeah, I do like this guy quite a bit. Um, it's got a nice weight to it. Very, very sturdy. Um, this is just a design sort of thing. It, uh, it came with a USB cable. And I don't know why, because there's absolutely no charging on this whatsoever. There's nothing built into it. Um, I, you know, you saw me take basically it apart as far as it can go, and there's there's just nothing. So I don't necessarily know why they felt the need to include a USB cable on the box, but they did. I'll probably toss it because uh, I get really I get really annoyed when you get a little uh, electronic thing that runs off a of micro USB and they give you like a lead that's like that long for it and it doesn't have data pins in it it's only uh power because that frustrates me if i want to grab it to actually use it for data at some point so uh you know i have my own cables so i just end up getting rid of uh those ones but yeah it was a giant pain in the ass cutting this damn thing open it made me quite irritated Mm-mm-mm. I don't actually know how far of the table that this is doing because I actually have this mounted to a uh, camera arm rather than uh, my usual uh, thing that's clamped on the desk. So it's out of view. But, uh, yeah, I also, you know, here's another Tucson kitchen knife. Uh, this one's kind of like that uh, 507 Tonto, or at least as far as the... Um, the uh, handle and Damascus kind of stuff going on there. This one, I'm actually, you know, because it's got a nice blade that holds onto it. Cute little apples. Um, I'm actually going to use it down here in uh, the basement at the wet bar. Uh, I do have another little tiny uh, knife there that I use for uh, kind of cutting up apples or whatever. But, you know, if we're doing something like uh, we did last Halloween... Um, not 2020, but 2019, where we made sangria and they wanted to cut up pineapples and citrus and all sorts of stuff. This would do a little bit better job than that uh, other knife that's only about that long. So yeah, that's kind of what I'll end up using for that. I think that's about all I really got. Sometimes I just kind of want to ramble. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the other thing. Uh, I was dealing with. Uh, I have a little handheld Eureka vacuum that uh, I basically had to uh, take apart because there was um, there was an afro inside the uh, the rollers and uh, of course almost no manufacturers of vacuums ever want you to be able to service the fucking brush roller. So yeah, I took some screws out of that and opened it up and was able to cut all of that crap out and everything. And I did that because <laughs> there's this itty bitty little Tucson knife here. Um, it's super, super thick, but it's S90V. Um, it's a slip joint. And uh, there's a couple of uh, these. There's two on each side to hold the uh, carbon fiber scales into the uh, titanium. And I lost one um, right below where I'm sitting right now. And, uh, yeah, I'd like to, uh, find that. And, uh, well, these things aren't exactly... Now oh, I have my magnet over on the table. But, uh, I have a very, very powerful, uh, magnet. And these don't respond to it. Uh, which means they're either titanium or aluminum or just not magnetized, uh, steel or whatnot. And, uh, yeah, so I've lost one of them that, uh, I mean, I can still certainly have the, uh, this guy all put back together, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm trying to basically vacuum the floor right down in front of me, uh, with this little handheld thing, and then I can go through the dust bin, especially if I hear something starting to rattle around, and, uh, hopefully find it that way. I haven't yet, but I did find this guy. Which, this was from a uh, CJRB video that I did a while back. Um, 
this guy is basically the uh, the lanyard attachment point for uh I don't remember if this was for the Centros or the Phelps bar, but uh they're they're quite similar. So uh one of those. Um and yeah, this is aluminum, so I didn't find it with a magnet earlier. I remember saying something in the video of I don't need that kind of negativity right now. So there's my closure on that. I found it. I'll set it there. So yeah, I'll continue to uh, vacuum around and see if I can't find this other itty bitty little son of a bitch to be able to put this guy back together fully. I did try to um, uh, anodize these guys. So I just basically did, you know, standard light bronze because uh, I kind of like that uh, look as uh, as a contrast to carbon fiber. So one of these days I'll actually get it back together. Um, I haven't really reviewed this. This is a, a Hoyudong uh, knife. And like I've seen from a couple of his others, um, I'm not super crazy with uh, it. I, it's, um, the, I think the thing about it is it's a slip joint that has just a ridiculous wedge of steel. Like it comes down to a decently nice point, especially after I've you know, ground it to uh, 15 degrees. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just way too damn thick for a slip joint. At least I think so. Uh, the the, uh, the pull on this guy is actually quite, quite strong as well. Um, and, you know, obviously on uh, most slip joints, you can't really adjust that because, well, it's a piece of steel. So you get what you get. But, yeah, I'd say that pull is probably somewhere around a... Uh, 7.5 or something like that. It's not, however, the most difficult pulling um, slip joint that I have. I got, like, I think one, maybe two that are um, quite ridiculous. They're, uh, I would probably consider it like eight and a half or a nine. Um, but it's actually not all that bad to open them. It's actually closing them back up that's um, a little sketchy. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I guess one stupidly and little small thing is uh, this come the the uh, the work sharp guy. Uh, the jaws comes with this uh, little piece of cardboard in there. And it says for optimal maintenance, store this sharpener with the card in the uh, in the clamp. It's just a piece of cardboard. You don't really need to abide by that. But um, it certainly helps with uh, shipping and whatnot. Or if you're trying to store it for a long time, I'd probably do something like that. But, you know, normal use, it really doesn't matter. All right. Well, that's absolutely everything that uh, I wanted to rant on about. You know, after cutting open a giant afro full of fur from... Uh, not fur. It was mostly my hair. Um, <laughs> and other roommates' hair from over the years that were uh, all cut up in there. So that's good. Uh, I did rinse out the uh, the filter on it, and um, it's uh, it's probably going to take a day or two to dry because uh, it's uh, very very fine mesh, like enough that uh, it basically holds water, but will slowly dribble out over time. So yeah. So I will uh, go ahead and set that on a fan or whatnot and come back to uh, trying to find my screw again. I really need to stop recording now. So uh, <laughs> if you've made it this far, what are you doing with your life? Um, but uh, nevertheless, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, as always, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.